Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. It's now time to take a look at news stories making headlines around the globe today. Now, a detachment of armed policemen have laid siege to the National Secretariat of the All Progressives Congress in Abuja following the pronouncement by a federal capital, uh, capital territory high court on Wednesday asking Adams Oshiomale, Comrade Adams Oshiomale, to stop parading himself as the national chairman of the party. Now, as at yesterday, at least five patrol vans and an armored personnel carrier were stationed around the secretariat while the officers prevented some persons from going into the APC headquarters. A group of protesters were also cited around the building, but their mission was not known. Now, the police also asked uh, those not staff of the secretariat to vacate the building, which led to panic and confusion in the area. Meanwhile, acting national secretary of the party, Victor Timbari Gerdam, who briefed journalists on the development, said the party would definitely respect the court order. Now, he noted that the National Working Committee would soon meet and give further clarification on the development. So... Doctor, police stormed the APC secretariat. Straight to you, what is your take on this latest development? Well, you know my position on the All Progressives Congress since the uh, 2019 general elections yeah. has been that the All Progressive Congress will seem not to have been able to manage its success uh, in the 2019 uh, general elections. And what we've been seeing since then mm. is, uh, you know, leadership conflicts, allegations of uh, frictions, uh, mm. crisis of internal democracy, and perhaps the uh, most dramatic part of the uh, crisis that has been faced by that political party is the uh, fact that the chairman of the party himself has been quite embattled. Yeah. He claimed, you know, after the elections that he led the party to victory, and he deserves to be given uh, due credit for that. But in his own home state of, uh, you know, Edo State, mm. he, he has had uh, a running battle with the uh, governor of the state, and also with some other key stakeholders within the party in Edo State. At the national level, there are persons, you know, uh, who have been saying that uh, Adam Sushomole uh, should uh, stand down as chairman of the party and allow another person uh, to lead the party uh, going forward. And so you find a political party uh, that is divided. Absolutely. But in this particular case, what happened is that in November 2019, mm -hmm. Uh, the uh, uh, Edo State uh, chapter of the APC had suspended uh, Adam Sushomole as a member of the party, yeah. uh, Isako Ward 10, uh, which is his uh, constituency. But of course, you recall that this was in the context of the quarrel between him and the uh, governor. Yeah. He was suspended by one faction. Another faction also suspended the governor. But it was on the basis of that that uh, one Uluwale Afolabi then approached the court to seek uh, an interlocutory injunction mm. to stop uh, Adam Sushomole from parading himself henceforth as uh, chairman of the party. And yesterday, you know, the court, the a federal high court in uh, Abuja, you know, granted that interlocutory injunction. But since then, uh, the affected party, that uh, uh, chairman of the party, Adam Sushomole, has insisted that he will remain mm. as the uh, chairman of the party. Now. Immediately after the uh, ruling, it was said to have even gone ahead to uh, give directives for the appointment of a national secretary, an acting national secretary for the party. Other persons within the, uh, uh, you know, within the party, of course, opposed that. Mm. So the situation now is that with the, uh, within the APC, you have two acting national uh, secretaries. Yeah. So the police going to uh, take over the uh, secretariat. I think acted uh, perfectly in order mm -hmm. to prevent any breakdown of law and order. Uh, but of course, uh, you know, we expect that uh, the uh, party will respect the court order. However, Adam Sushomole himself has gone to court, uh, we are told, uh, to uh, ask for a stay of execution mm. from a court of appeal so that that will enable him to remain as the uh, chairman of the party. But whatever it is, mm. uh, the party needs to uh, reconcile, you know, its members. The party needs to place more emphasis on internal democracy. Absolutely. Uh, you know, peace is important because our political party system uh, is central to the democratic process. When these parties are in disarray, what you are violating, invariably, is the integrity of the uh, 
uh, of the democratic process. Absolutely. Spot on, Doctor. You know, it's very interesting because there's so many angles here. One, there's the issue of that disobeying the court's order that's been given, and that's quite serious. And I think you're right. The police were perfectly in order. And the most important thing here is definitely internal party democracy. At the end of the day, this is the ruling party. We've had several conversations over the past few months about a lack of internal party democracy within the main opposition party. And here we are. This is a very big issue. But let's see how it all uh, plays out. On to our next story of the day still in Nigeria, the Minister of Finance, Zainab Ahmed, has said that the federal government may review the approved 2020 budget over the economic impact of coronavirus. Now, the 2020 budget of 10.59 trillion naira was based on crude oil benchmark of $57 per barrel, with a production capacity of 2.1 million barrels per day. But the virus, which has now spread to 64 countries, has negatively affected the price of crude oil, Nigeria's major source of revenue. Speaking with journalists at the end of the Federal Executive Council meeting on Wednesday, the minister said that there are concerns over the spread of the disease as it has economic impact. She said crude oil production is now between 2 million and 2.1 million barrels per day, which is below the benchmark on which the budget was prepared. Ahmed said a review will be done to determine if a budget adjustment will be enforced. Now, I mean... <laughs> This is one of several worrying economic shocks and impacts that we're going to feel from the coronavirus. And we knew that this was coming. We've had conversations about the fact that a fall in oil prices is a serious issue for us here in Nigeria because that is what our 2020 budget has been based on. So the minister has come out to say that there is going to be a review. So, I mean, that's a good step because at the end of the day, we don't want to be going on a false premise of false hope. Doctor, what is your take? Well, clearly, I mean, uh, what has happened with coronavirus is that it has shown how vulnerable the entire world is yeah. in the face of disease, but even more so in the case of Nigeria. Uh, the Minister of uh, Finance, uh, Budget and National Planning talks about economic Im impact. And of course, that's a no-brainer mm. because Nigeria more or less has a fixed income. We're heavily dependent on uh, oil. And for that reason, our vulnerability has also again been uh, writ large. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the midterm review that she talks about is uh, definitely inevitable. You know, even if the coronavirus, uh, you know, disappears, uh, you know, early enough. Mm. Uh, if uh, oil price is now below $52 and the budget has a benchmark of $57, uh, yeah. uh, then, of course, you know that everything is, uh, is uh, you know, in disarray. Uh, secondly, 2.1 million barrels per day. Mm. That's the projection uh, in the uh, 2020 year budget, right? But as we talk, as we sit here, you know, OPEC is meeting in Vienna today. OPEC had previously uh, reduced uh, crude output by 2.1 million barrels per day. Now, today, uh, OPEC is going to uh, try to reach a consensus on whether there should be an additional one million barrels per day cut. Mm. But it is very clear that, you know, uh, some of the countries cannot cut equally, and some of them may not even agree, because already uh, Russia, which has a budget surplus, is already resisting it because of the impact that, you know, further cuts can have on consumers. And Nigeria, well, can we afford any further cut? You know, so it's, uh, it's a very dicey situation. Really uh, dicey. We're hoping that today in Vienna, you know, the OPEC plus countries may not mm. be able to reach a, a consensus, mm. and the situation will remain as it is. Mm. If Nigeria wants anything, Nigeria, in fact, will want to produce more, mm -hmm. more barrels per day, so that mm -hmm. we can sustain the economy. Mm -hmm. But whatever happens, the minister is uh, perfectly right that, mm -hmm. you know, we need to do a review. And that review, Absolutely. of course, will have to be done, you know, uh, in collaboration, of course, with the, uh, with the National Assembly. But the long-term, uh, you know, uh, effect of this is that Nigeria needs to move faster in terms of coming up with more creative ideas, new ideas about how to diversify the country's uh, revenue base. Otherwise, we'll keep complaining mm -hmm. every time that if uh, oil prices drop, mm -hmm. then we need to do a review. Exactly. And how we can also diversify our excess crude account. The fact that, you know, we're looking at an excess crude account that we're learning is literally empty. And, of course, 95% of that comes from oil. Uh, we are going to go on a very quick commercial break now. And when we're back, we will have a rice business analyst and anchor of the Global uh, Business Report, Rota Sadiri, here to give us the latest of today. Stay with us. Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. Now, 
Uh, with us in the studio is a rice business analyst and anchor of the Global Business Report, Rotus Odiri, who is here to discuss shipping costs and the latest in the oil Good morning. Sector. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Right. <laughs> so, look, um, SBM Intelligence, which is a consulting firm, came out with this uh, report uh, saying that they compared EU shipments coming into three ports, our Papa, our beloved our Papa, which is probably the most congested place in the world, um, our Papa, uh, Tema in Ghana, and Durban in South Africa. And they looked at the costs over the, about a three-month period, I believe, the costs of shipping uh, for those three different ports. And, you know, there's no, no prize for guessing who had the, the, the highest costs coming in. Uh, if you look at, yeah, we have that here. Papa Port shipping charges, $374 for shipping, vessels 321 in Tema, 247 in Durban. Terminal charges, when you get your, your items in there, those were also higher as well. The total cost, when you look at comparing the, the three of them, were about five times higher, uh, three times higher than Tema, and almost five times higher than South Africa. When you think of the impact of, you know, something like the African Continental Free Trade Agreement, we are supposed to be opening up trade, uh, intra-Africa trade, and and what the, what the impact could be, you're looking at bottlenecks as well as ease of doing business. Mm. Now, couched, possibly couched into those local transportation costs could be some other costs that are not reflected. That is possible, you know, uh, bribes, uh, possible issues with getting your goods from the port over to uh, your warehouse. Getting um, them out of the ports. Getting them out of the ports. Uh, you know, the folks that might hold you up mm -hmm. on the roads the conditions of the roads themselves, we don't have rail, you know, all these things, you know, add up to, to a, a clog in the wheel when it comes to an easy, having a proper flow from the ports over there. And so there's a lot of ramifications. Um, I think Reuters picked this up as well. They were, they were, they were talking about this this morning. So it's, again, something that the government has to look at with regards to improving conditions because, you know, this is... It, it, has, it has its ramifications. So yeah, it's nice that's what has always been uh, focusing on post reform. Mm. Post reform in Nigeria began well in recent times, in mm. 2006, mm. under the uh, Olusha Gumbasanjo administration. And that was when that administration took the decision to more or less privatize uh, cargo handling at the port. And mm. private terminal operators, or those they call concessionaires, uh, became the cargo handlers at the yeah. port. And MPA, the Nigerian Port Authority, was limited to provision of infrastructure regulation and all of that. But despite all that reform, yes, the private terminal operators may have improved efficiency just a little bit. But the truth of the matter, as that Reuters report, uh, that SBM report pointed out, is that, look, Nigeria has the uh, longest cargo dwell time in the whole of Africa and is the most inefficient ports, you know, that you have in mm. West Africa. We have six ports, mm. with Apapa and Tinkan alone handling over 70 yes. percent of uh, imports. And then you have the ones in on uh, the ones in Port Accord, Wari, yeah. you mm -hmm. know, and, uh, yeah, but, you know, it's the same story all mm -hmm. over the place. And the issues include, yes, corruption. Two, problems also with uh, uh, cargo handlers and uh, agents, right. the shipping agents, Technology. who are not professional. Mm. Three, customs, right. wasting a lot of time, bureaucratic uh, bottlenecks. These are some of the areas that, you know, government perhaps would have to look at. And then, of course, the issue about local transportation. Averagely in the world, it takes two to three days, you know, for a uh, turnaround, right. you know, at international ports. But in Nigeria, you could spend up to 20 days. Mm -hmm. You know, there's almost what looks like deliberate delay. Mm. No, it is deliberate delay. Yeah. It's always yeah. deliberate delay. Like it's, and it's really worrying because, and I'm glad this report spoke about the fact that we're looking at this ahead of the Africa Free Trade Area, uh, Continental Area Agreements. Mm. How does this position us, you right. know? Like this is, a, this is an agreement that we're supposed to benefit from probably more than any country in right. Africa if we're being it, well, serious. We're so big, yeah. And here we are discussing the fact that our shipping costs compared to Durban are about five, six times the cost. It's, it's honestly... Too the, the overall implication, of course, is about revenue mm -hmm. for the country. If you say you are diversifying your revenue base and you have an inefficient port system, then, of course, you know, you are not uh, getting it right. right. But we'll keep talking yeah. about it. We'll keep, keep Thanks looking. for bringing it up, Rosa. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.